Hello and good morning, I'm Morgan Donner and today is an excellent day for attempting to make some latex clothing. I'm sure you're wondering why and I don't have a great answer for you other than it just, it sounded like a lot of fun. It's such an unusual material that I really want to give it a try. While we get wool fabric from sheep and we get silk from silkworms, we get latex from the rubber tree. You tap the tree, kind of like how you would for maple syrup on a maple tree, and it has a sort of milk-esque sap that comes out that is actually just called latex, straight from the tree. That is what that product is called. And then you'll take that, it coagulates when it's exposed to air and becomes kind of rubbery, like we would think of rubber. But in order to actually use it, we do have to do a little bit more to it. We add sulfur and a bit of heat in order to vulcanize it. In the like mid 1800s, when they were first really trying to figure out uses for this product, they did totally make clothing and all, all sorts of things, parts for machines. The problem was they were so fast with this manufacturing process that they'd make it, sell it, and then the customers would come back in the summer when it had gotten really hot and all of those rubber products had melted. Like they'd gotten very sticky and squishy and just were not staying what they were when they bought them. Fortunately, we figured out how to fix that with the sulfur and the heat so that now it's very stable. But anyways, what makes latex really interesting for me in the context of wanting to make some clothing is that unlike every other material I've ever worked with, you don't sew it together. You don't stitch it, you glue it. Actually, you can sew it, sort of. I did a quick little test sampler piece, but the problem with that is that whenever you stitch latex, it now has a permanent hole. So unfortunately, when you do a line of stitches like this, you've just created a perforation line, kind of like with paper. It is now very interested in tearing along this seam. Now, fortunately, it can, it can hold up to a little bit, but I can already see how big these holes from the stitching are getting, just with only a moderate bit of wear and tear. On an actual garment, that seam is not gonna last. So you use glue so that it sticks together and doesn't have any holes as weak points. So to give this whole process a try, I got two pieces of latex. This is a 0.2 millimeter thickness, so it's quite thin, extra stretchy. This would be kind of fun as like decorative details on something, but maybe not so much for the whole garment unless you really don't mind that it's quite transparent. Whereas this one I am very excited about. This is a 0.5 millimeter, so it's got a lot more heft to it. It still stretches really nicely, but not quite as, you know, easily as the, the white one. And this will make, I think, a very lovely garment. I particularly think it's so cool that it's blue on one side and then red on the other, which I feel like gives some very fun, you know, design possibilities. So this is going to be my, my main fabric for the day. From what I can tell from my research, you're supposed to use, supposed to, it's very common for folks to use approximately three and a half to four, uh, point, three and a half, point four millimeters of thickness. So this is on the ever so slightly thick end of things, but hopefully that means it'll make something nice and sturdy. Now, pattern wise, I do wanna try and make things simple for myself and just go with something that I already have. Fortunately, I tend to keep the patterns for pretty much everything I make so that I can, if I want to, go back and reference them again for later. Now, I have lots of options, but I think that making a curdle is gonna be my best bet. One of the things that latex is really, really good at is making extremely fitted garments and curdles are a very fitted garment, at least the style that I make. All right, now to actually get started, I do need to pick which of the curdle patterns I've done over the years I wanna use. So I have my gold mock-up number two, which I think I remember that fitting pretty well, so strong contender. And then there's my pink curdle, which is I think one of my favorite fits of curdle ever, except the neckline, I, 
I'm not fully decided if that's the neckline I want. You know, if I want to go kind of wide and round, a more medieval style, sort of boat neck y, or if I want to go a little bit more modern with kind of like a deeper U shape. So I've decided to go with the pink kirtle pattern. I made this probably well over 10 years ago at this point. Uh, I think that unlike some of the patterns I've made since then, this has a little bit of a flatter bust curve on that seam, which I think is going to translate better to the latex material. Might be wrong, but we'll see. I'm gonna go off of this theory for right now. So I have a front piece and a back piece. Now these, as you can kind of see, have a rough half inch or so seam allowance included, which is not going to work with the latex. One thing to keep in mind with working with latex is that you should have a bit more negative ease, unless you're making something that's purposefully loose. Like if you were to make this shirt, obviously it wouldn't have negative ease. But for something very fitted, Latex stretches so much that you, you kind of want it to be a little, a little extra snug than you might make out of a woven fabric like this. Unfortunately, I can't quite see these lines underneath my paper here. So instead, what I'm going to do is trace around the outside and then just mark in from this seam about half an inch. So I've traced out the top half of the pattern, but now we kind of need to think about the bottom half, the skirt portion, and specifically about length. So I did not get a huge amount of fabric of latex so i definitely can't go for the very medieval like floor length look we're gonna have to go much shorter so i think what i'm gonna aim for is you know knee above knee ish should work well i put up the pattern kind of in front of my body to see about if that was the right length and i think it'd be super cute that short but i'm gonna go just a smidge longer i think maybe six inches will do although actually you know what you know what, I have an extra couple more inches here on the paper. Let's just go ahead and go all the way down to the edge of the paper. And then I'm gonna try and round it out so that it's somewhat close to the actual finished hemline look. Next up, I need to go ahead and get rid of my seam allowance because we wanna go with that negative ease thing. It needs to be just a little bit smaller. I'm gonna go ahead and just take off the entirety of the seam allowance, half inch all the way around, and then we're gonna cut that out. So I got that front piece cut out and I did all the same stuff for the back. Although I did kind of realize as I got far enough along that I actually don't want to cut away all the seam allowances because I think that at the neck and the arm side area, I want to have extra material there that I can fold over to get like a very clean rounded edge. Now we can go to cutting the actual latex, which will be very exciting. So what I'm going to do is lay this nice and flat. I'm going to trace it out with a marker or a pen. And then from there, I'm going to cut it out with a rotary blade. I think one of the things I need to be very careful about, if I understand correctly, is you know how when you're cutting something with scissors, sometimes you get kind of jagged edges? You really, really want to avoid that. You want to have one very smooth, straight pass of your blade so that you don't have any ragged bits that can lead to tears later on. I am really excited to see how this turns out. I think one of the areas I'm a little concerned about is the length of the waist on the original pattern. I know that with the pink dress that it was based off of, it does tend to kind of want to compress a little bit lower on the belly, which works beautifully in that fabric, but I am a little bit less certain about how it's gonna work in a stretchy latex, but we'll find out. If it does turn out that it wants to scrunch up higher on my waist in a way that is not very appealing, I think that I can I can still fix it, but let's just hope that it works out. Latex has such interesting connotations right now, and I'm really interested in the idea of exploring it in a more everyday wear, although of course I obviously had to go for ridiculous medieval inspired things, but even so, I think that there's, there's an element of slightly more casual wear inspiration here as compared to full on like sexy wear. And I think that's a, that's a fun place to explore, trying to combine elements like modern and historical or hints of sexy, but in a more kind of everyday context. Like I, I love the juxtaposition of adding things that are so different together. You know, it's, it makes me happy, but back to this, we have all of the pieces cut out. My next step, is to go ahead and start gluing the seams together. 
I think I'm going to start out with the back pieces together so that if it's not a very good looking seam, I can kind of get my practice run out on the least visible, at least to me, uh, part. And then, so I'll do the back seam, I'll do each of the side seams, and then the front seam. Hopefully I will have had enough practice by that point that it'll look good. When you buy latex sheets, they usually come coated in this light powdery substance, mostly to help it from sticking to each other if it wasn't coated. You'll notice a very similar thing if you've ever put on latex gloves and then you take them off and your hands are covered in like a powder. That's what that is. So what we need to do in order to glue this is first remove the powder. I'm using some latex adhesive thinner, but any sort of mineral spirit should work. When you apply any kind of moisture, the latex is going to curl up on itself, but within about five minutes, it should relax back down flat. So I cleaned up my first two edges yesterday, and you can really tell the difference between the cleaned edge versus the side that still has powder on it. I left that to dry for a couple hours and go have dinner and stuff, and I came back and realized that I had actually cleaned one of the wrong sides because unlike normal fabric, you don't take right side and right side and put them together and then you end up with a seam inside. Instead, you take your know, right side and right side and you overlap them. So I need to actually clean the top side of one edge and the underside of the other edge. So let's go ahead and try that again, shall we? Next, I'm going to mark my seam allowances with a quarter inch seam allowance. This is something that you can definitely skip once you're more experienced and you have just a really good eye for how wide exactly you want your seam allowances to be. But since I'm still a bit new, I found this super helpful to make sure I'm really consistently applying the, both the adhesive and it helps with alignment later on. A really quick safety note here, I am working with chemicals, which means that wearing a respirator that's rated for solvents is absolutely a good idea. And, you know, opening up some windows and turning on some fans wouldn't hurt. Now for the actual adhesive, I'm going to apply it using a narrow brush and using that marking as a guide. It's gonna curl back up again, but since we need to wait five minutes anyway before we actually apply the two seams together, that's gonna also give it time to uncurl a bit as well. Once that five minutes is done, we're gonna flip over one of the pieces and then try lining up one edge with that seam allowance marking. If you don't get the placement quite perfectly, you can still at this stage lift it gently back up and then replace it back down. Once you're satisfied though, you're gonna really cement the pieces together by using a roller. If you don't have a roller, any sort of like jar or you know hairspray can, any sort of round, Thing that you can roll it and really kind of press the seams together firmly will work. That said, I am super duper not an expert at any of this and you should probably not listen to anything I say because I'm almost certainly doing quite a bit of this wrong. So, but with that out of the way, we can move on to actually gluing the seams, which I'm really excited for on the actual dress. I am two seams in and this is simultaneously easier and harder than I expected it to be. So unlike the demonstration piece, which was very short and straight, this is a much longer and much curvier seam. So in order to help make sure that the glued pieces didn't flop to where they weren't supposed to and pick up dust and you know there's also a lot of dust flying around in the room because i had all the fans going earlier so i made several long slim strips of cling film and put those on the glued seams as i went that way they could be nice and ready for me while i prepared the other one and that also meant that as i was applying the seams to each other i started at the neck and then kind of went downward it meant that I could kind of re reveal little bits and pieces of the seam rather than trying to have it all at once. Even with just two seams, I'm already seeing a huge improvement. The back seam is really rough. I think it's functional, but it's uh, not very pretty. I think that my technique and like how I lay it down is still getting there. The second one already looks much better, although I had the same problem on both of them, which is that the top seam ended up being a little bit longer at the end when they should be pretty dang close. So I think I'm accidentally stretching the top just a little bit as I go, which isn't great, but I'm 
I'm hoping that it's a small enough amount that it won't make a big difference in how it hangs and stuff. Uh, I know that registration marks wouldn't be like a bad idea for this, but I didn't do that. So we're, we're just gonna keep on going on and hope that it all turns out okay. So I was originally planning on doing the back seam and then the two side seams, but I realized that because the front is a little bit more complex, it's probably best that I do that while everything is still flat and before it becomes kind of more of a 3D object to deal with. What's gonna make the front so interesting is I wanna go ahead and have it with a grommet so that it can lace up just like a you know, normal medieval style kirtle. I think what I'm gonna do is take some cotton twill tape that I have and sort of imbue it with uh, liquid latex. <laughs> I just had a very, very exciting incident with the glue as I was trying to get the uh, tape taken care of. Now that I am changed into not glue covered clothing, let's uh, go ahead and get these tapes taken care of. So it's going to soak up the latex. I'm gonna let that cure. Cause if you just try sticking cloth to this, it's, it's not gonna stick. It needs to kind of be married to its own latex. And then you can take that and use the latex glue to attach it together. I probably need to let that cure overnight, I'm thinking. And then tomorrow I can glue that to the front here. And I'll do that on both of the front pieces. I think I need to have an additional piece of latex on the back just to help really sort of sandwich in that tape and keep it from moving about at all. I'm hoping that's gonna work out well. I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna do that thing where I fold the edge over to make it nice and rounded there or not. I'll decide tomorrow. Oh, all right. We are making excellent progress this morning so far. I decided in the end that I would go ahead and have the edge overlap so that it kind of makes it smooth there. I think that looks good. I do kind of wish that I had done the strip that sort of covers the tape after I'd done the flippy over part, but uh, I didn't. So I'm just gonna glue it down like this and hope that that works well. There's gonna be grommets on top of this, so hopefully that'll help kind of keep everything in place. I did a really quick little like test strip version just to try and kind of wrap my head around how I wanted this to work. So basically I left the seam allowance on one side, but then cut it on the other so that when they got glued together, it continues that line, you know, because these are both folded back hopefully that makes some sense. I think I will add like a little reinforcement patch kind of like right here. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty hopeful that that'll all work out okay. I'm not entirely sure that my explanation for how I was gonna join that center front was clear, so hopefully this helps. I taped up the front edge just because I really wanted to make sure that the very top of this matched up perfectly, so I taped that all the way down so that this starts correctly. As you can see, my Twill tape didn't precisely end up in the same spot, but that's okay, we're gonna move past it. So what I've done is I've glued from here down on both sides. On this side, I cut away that extra half inch of seam allowance so that I can now tape it directly over this half inch of seam allowance and visually continue that nice straight line. Now that our front is nice and glued and ready to go, let's go ahead and start looking at making the lacing holes. In order to get the placement for my grommets, I'm gonna use this little lacing hole guide given to me by Costuming Drama. And I'm gonna use the one inch marker approximately halfway between the tape. So 
approximately there, there, there. And then for the other opening, if I wanna do a proper spiral lace style opening, I wanna go between each of these points. So I've tried to line it up so that these are between like so. So see how they make a nice zigzag. And then at the top, you just wanna make one that mirrors the very starting one. Now that I've got my markings in place and ready to go, we can go ahead and remove this tape. Again, using my philosophy that you want to start in the least visible area, neither at the very tippy top nor at the bottom. We're gonna start right in the middle to get some of our practice grommets in. Now that I've got a hole, I'm gonna to toss in this piece here. I'm gonna make sure that all of the front is using the same piece. That way we get a consistent look in the end. If you accidentally switch throughout, it's gonna look different because the front side of a grommet and the back side absolutely don't look the same. So just keep that in mind whenever you're working on something like this. And now the grommets are all done and I am suddenly very, very excited to get this finished up because I, I kind of can't wait to try this on. I think the grommets turned out really, really well. That makes me so happy. And there's something just very satisfying about them. They feel so clean and neat just right from the get-go. I'm a big fan. So next up, we still need to finish that final seam here on the side. We're gonna connect it with the other side around here, which means that whenever I place it down, I'm probably gonna need to glue it with some like additional paper under, which I've kind of been doing throughout the process, but that's gonna help make sure that I don't accidentally get a bunch of glue elsewhere on the dress that doesn't need to be. And then after the side seam, we're gonna do both of the shoulders. And then finally, I think the last little bit is going to be kind of curving the neckline and the arm side area. So that'll help not only make it look cleaner, but I think it'll also help reinforce the kind of strength at the start of the seams there. At least that's what I'm hoping, that it'll make it less likely to rip and tear unexpectedly. I believe that I originally had a half inch of seam allowance along those areas, but I think I might possibly go just a little bit smaller than that, which means that my straps are gonna be a little bit visually wider than I had you know, originally patterned for, but I think that functionally it should still work out really well. So I'll fold it over just a wee little quarter inch and I think that that's gonna look really, really nice. It is now looking suspiciously more dress-like than it has at any point thus far. The shoulder seams are done, the side seams done, even the neckline is done. I ended up not doing this arm sigh here just because visually it feels like it's about right for an arm sigh, so I think I wanna wait and try it on. I really, really wanna go ahead and try this on right away, but from what I can tell, conventional wisdom is to try and give the glue at least 24 hours to sort of settle in really nicely. So I guess I will go ahead and wait before I give this a try, but I am very excited to see what this is up to. In the meantime though, since I, I apparently have some time on my hands, I do wanna go ahead and tell you really quick about the sponsor of today's video, which is gonna be Hunt a Killer. Hunt a Killer is like a monthly game night in a box. We will often spend our evenings playing video games or doing puzzles or solving murder mysteries. We haven't actually played this one yet, so I'm really excited to look at it tonight. This is like a murder that they think is an accident in New England. It's in Maine and we're in Vermont, but still, that's very exciting that it's like somewhere that's vaguely close. One of the absolute coolest things is how they send you items that pertain to the mystery that feel like real items. Like you, you get things that feel like it's an actual little informational pamphlet on this little town in Maine. You get things like this police report with redacted information. I, I really enjoy that it's so visually interesting and it's fun to read through together all the different bits of 
information and talk about it together. Oh, they have horoscopes. Whether you're wanting to just have something fun to do with yourself in the evening or you know you want to enjoy something with friends, I think this is super cool and I love that you get a new addition to the story every month. Like that's something that I think that a lot of kind of traditional games just don't offer. You can get $10 off by the way if you use my link down in the description. I think you guys will have a lot of fun. It is the next morning, so it's it hasn't been 24 hours, but I don't wanna wait. I wanna, I wanna try it on really quick, see what we're looking like. So I am gonna go ahead and add some lacing string here next. I think it is looking very cute so far. I do think that I am gonna go ahead and tuck in the seam allowance here. I wasn't sure, so I wanted to try it on to find out. There's also some glue spots around as well as dog hair covering this whole thing. So it needs to get cleaned up <laughs> to, before I can show what the, the finished thing looks like. I also do need to trim the hem evenly because there's bits where it's jagged. You can kind of see there, so. I need to clean up those, but once it is all cleaned up and completely, you know, tucked in and everything, I'm excited to show you what it looks like. <laughs> well, here we are. It is done and I feel very shiny and cute. There is something so incredibly different about latex as a material for making clothing than anything else I've worked with. It's really neat. Latex has this reputation for being a very sexy material and I can see why. Like because you usually wear it directly next to your skin. It tends to be very form-fitting, which is fun and nice in its way. It must like conduct temperature really well because you it feels like the latex is the temperature of your skin. Does that make sense? So it feels skin-like and yet it's not. Like I, I can definitely see the appeal. All in all, I would say that my first foray into latex garment making went pretty dang well. There are definitely some things that I wish were a little bit different. Arm area here is a little bit looser than it needs to be with fabric. Like this stretches so much that I, I could have made this a little bit smaller and not had to have had as much excess there. It's passable. It's just the things I would change if I could. Like I feel like the the waist has a little bit of wrinkling where the excess material wants to scrunch up to the smallest point of my body. You'll notice with a lot of latex garments if you go like look some up, use your safe search if you do, but you'll notice that a lot of them tend to either be very form-fitting past the hips which would help kind of hold the wrinkles at the waist down because they've got some force there. Or if they are kind of a fit and flare style, then they tend to have a separate waistband, which I think would probably help kind of disguise that, that tendency for the latex to want to go to the smallest possible point, i.e., you know, scrunch up around your waist. So that could probably be fixed with better patterning. But as a finished garment, I think it turned out pretty well and Part of, I think, what makes me really excited about this is, of course, it looks pretty nice in the way that you usually wear latex garments, which is to say, by themselves. But I was really curious about the idea of wearing it under something. Actually works pretty dang well. I recognize that I might not be the person to give such an opinion since I very often like to wear shirts and things underneath my dresses, but it's really comfy and I don't see why people don't do it more often. I had a lot of fun at making the dress as well as some very quick accessories like the veil and wimple that you saw a moment ago and this cute little belt that I thought might be a nice addition to the look. I ah, This is such a unique material. I'd really love the chance to play with it more. If you guys have suggestions for a project that you think would be really interesting to see, out of latex and might benefit from the fact that it does really well with very form-fitting sort of outfits or that it's got this really interesting way of like gluing like I am so fascinated with the idea of playing with some of the transparent 
forms of latex like like a little heart cut out in a transparent like a little window would be really cute and I, I have ideas and I just don't yet have a direction to direct them you know one of the cool things about latex being so elastic and stretchy is that you can kind of sort of change how it sits which it just it gives it a type of flexibility no pun intended that some clothing might not have otherwise which i think is really really cool it definitely does have its downsides though for example it is not super uv friendly you shouldn't just be outside all day every day in your latex you don't have to like completely stay inside but just you know kind of be aware of it and maybe don't store your latex clothing anywhere near where the sun can can be on it for a long period of time. It also needs to be taken care of a little bit differently compared to your standard clothing. You can't throw it in the washer and the dryer, but if you don't mind, you know, having some clothing that you have to hand wash and maybe kind of treat a little bit more delicately, it is a very fun option that I think you should consider. Thank you guys so much for watching my very silly whims as to like a thing that I wanted to try out and I if you guys like it I I'd really love to do more I think it's really interesting and I feel like I've just barely scratched the surface so let me know any hoodles I have a date night to get to so you guys have a lovely day check out hunt a killer it's a really fun date night game actually oddly enough uh, and I think you guys will have a lot of fun checking it out and maybe enjoying future videos from me. Alright see ya! <laughs>